Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. What's going on, everybody? Nerd of the Nineties here, and I'm here to give you guys exactly what I promised for the next video game review. Since I haven't reviewed a game since Fortnite, though, this time now we're gonna be reviewing. Mortal Kombat 11 and I know I'm like three months late for this game and I know it came out since April and right now as of July it's It's already three months that it came out and believe it or not it had a rough launch But later on things got fixed in the very end which we'll get to later though But believe it or not guys I really want to take up I really want to keep these glasses going so I can look a little bit like here's Johnny Johnny Cage who is also one of my favorite characters but Luke Kang is definitely one of my favorites of all time though Love Scorpion, I love Sub-Zero, but Liu Kang is definitely one of my favorite ones. Uh, Johnny Cage comes in fourth, and Sonya Blade's in fifth. Um, new characters from the series, Aaron Black, one of my favorites of all, one of my new favorites that actually came out too. Uh, Kodo Khan is really cool. Um, I really do like Cassie Cage. Combo's a little bit weird though. Jackie Briggs, and man, they really did dumb down for Dewara. I'll get to that in a little bit though, but first things first. All right, here we go. Oh wait. There we go, so you guys can see I got the glasses here. And even though to show you guys that I own the game though, it's the full disc and as you can hear the disc right in here. So yeah, let's begin. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 who was developed by NetherRealm Studios um, and published by Warner Brothers Game Interactive though. Let's begin with one of the things that really did um, made the game a household name though. And this time, I, I always start off with the story mode, but you know what, I'm gonna begin right here with the story mode. So Mortal Kombat 11 takes place exactly right after Mortal Kombat X. Raiden has completely become corrupted with Shinnok's magic and he, we see him torturing Shinnok. So with that in mind, um, he kills off Shinnok, he just slices his head off and completely like, you know, just loses it. And then he goes and warns Luke King, Katana, like what he's gonna be doing. And then he takes off, maybe later takes his head with them later on. But then after that we see a time freeze and we see that Chronica shows up out of nowhere and pretty much lets Shinnok know that th things are going to be happening. And then with that, that's when Mortal Kombat 11 happens. So with that we see that Raiden is actually planning on attacking um, Liu Kang, Katana and the rest of the Ren events and including all the Nether the Netherrealm over there to pretty much attack them. And after that we see Cassie Cage, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage and Jackie Briggs planning on doing their attack. And things go completely bad because one of the uh, biggest characters, that uh, one of the main characters actually gets killed off, though I don't want to spoil who it is, though, but everybody pretty much knows who it is. Um, after that, we see that um, pretty much Liu Kang and Katana pretty much lost. And we see that Kronika pretty much wants to help him out. So she pretty much re pretty much rewinds everything, brings back the castle that they lived at in the Nether Realm. And then with that, they want to plan on take eliminating Raiden from the timeline. And so what happens is that Corrupted Raiden from that timeline completely disappears and we get to see past selves with, which is, we get to see a young version of Liu Kang, young version of Kung Lao, young version of Katana, young version of uh, Jade, a young, well, still pretty much Raiden doesn't age that much, but we get to see like less Corrupted Raiden though, and it takes place like right after Mortal Kombat 1, I would say. Uh, no, actually, no. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 1 and Mortal Kombat 2, it, it, it's stuck between those lines. And then we get to see here that Shao Kahn, I think this is actually from an alternate one, which we see um, Shao Kahn, Aaron Black, Baraka, um, Kano, and what other characters do show up, though? Um, they do show up out of nowhere, though, and they completely wreak havoc and cause every, everything to pretty much just lose everything though. And we get to see new characters being introduced. We get to see the Collector introduced for the very first time. Garrus, who's also, um, let's just say, kind of like, you know, the assistant for Kronika. And Cetrion, who was the daughter of Kronika, which I thought she was a pretty interesting character. And we see more of the story develop after that too. And I really did enjoy this because everybody really wanted time traveling. We get to see like the younger selves interacting with their future selves, which is really cool though. Johnny Cage, pretty much meeting his douchebag version of the younger self of his. Sonya Blade, pretty much meeting her own futuristic daughter. We get to see um, Jackie Briggs meeting her father for the very first time as a younger version. And it's really cool and it's really interesting though and it's five plus hours long though and also there is also different uh, ver versions too because there's like three moments though where you can pretty much choose between 
Liu Kang, Kong Lao, um, J Jackie Briggs, um, Jackson Briggs, Sub-Zero, and, and um, Scorpion. It's really interesting, though. And then also, it's the to me, from the looks of it, this is pretty much the final chapter in the series. We don't get... We don't get a, a Mortal Kombat 12 tease at all. It's it's the final chapter and it ends from there. I don't want to spoil much though because there's so many twists and turns and it's it's really freaking cool. And I loved how the way it's implemented though and seeing that it questions the fans. What is that I'm going to do? But I'm predicting Injustice 3. I think that's pretty much the next and final thing before Netherrealm plans on something doing, doing something else in the future. So we don't know. And so yeah, the story mode, uh, without a doubt, is one of my favorites and one of the true highlights right next to Injustice 2 because Injustice 2 had a really good story mode. And same thing with this one though, even though it's technically the final chapter of the trilogy, which Mortal Kombat, 1, Mortal Kombat 9 came out in 2011, which was actually a reboot from the, uh, from the other previous Mortal Kombats. And yeah, to me, it's, it's a great story. So let's also talk about the new, the characters in the game. We get to see characters come back from Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat X, which we have um, Aaron Black, which I was disappointed about his playability. I got the hang of it, of how the way he is. Devora, I'll get to that later, though. Good thing she's back, though, but I don't like how the way she plays. Ka uh, sh not Shao Kahn. Well, Shao Kahn is now officially a playable character, though, but um, not, that's part of it, though. But Koro Khan is back, too. Um, Jackie Bricks is back. Cassie Cage making a comeback, and that's uh, that's about it from the uh, Mortal Kombat um, X characters though. No Ferritor, no Takeda, and no Kung Jin, which kind of shocks me. And yeah, it, it kind of sucks though. But you know what? Let's see if they're gonna, we're gonna be having them as DLC though. And then we have Mortal Kombat Eight characters finally make a return, which is actually one of them, which was actually uh, Frost. Frost caught me off guard though, and after playing her, she's actually pretty good. Um, there's other characters like. Um, that I never actually played in my history of Mortal Kombat, and that was actually uh, Cabal. I really liked his playability. He's pretty much like the Flash, but in the Mortal Kombat games. Um, Snoop Saibot, though, or should should say Bihan, um, which is his true name. I really did like this playability, though. That voice of his. You despise me, Quietly. You have destroyed everything from me. Well, he doesn't say it like that, but you know, I'm just trying to demonstrate his voice. Your soul is mine. Actually, no. The real person who says it the real way is actually Shang Tsung. Your soul is mine. Your brother's soul is mine. Your soul is mine. Your soul is mine. Oh, I love that. I love that. But you know what? Let's discuss that too. I played as also for DLC characters as of this video. Um, Shang Tsung is actually so much fun in this game though He does deliver a bunch of Easter eggs from the previous movies though When he interacts with the other characters though And having his jacket back from the original movie though Which is really cool And also um, Carrie Who makes a comeback too to voice him Which is really cool And yeah I'm, I'm actually happy that he does come back too And then we're having Sindel coming back too And I hope there will be a moment where she says This line Too bad you will die Too bad you will die from from that really terrible Mortal Kombat Annihilation movie. Oh, that that was terrible. And we and we're having Nightwolf who we got a tease and he looks pretty damn cool. And I want to know how his playability is gonna be because all the fans are pretty much clamoring for that too. And then we have Spawn coming out too, which is actually interesting though. And then other and then two other DLC characters who are rumored to be Terminator and Ash Williams though. And I'm really interested and I'm really looking forward to the DLC characters too. Even though we have also six more characters too because I think they tied it up though. Three guest characters and three MK characters. I hope for the other three characters we get Pennywise the Clown. We get um, Michael Myers. The third one surprised us. I think maybe Pinhead or Hellraiser. That would be actually cool. Rumor has it, I think, for the MK characters, though, we we are might be getting uh, Shiva. Shiva might be playable since she's pretty much part of the story, too. Um, the other two, maybe we might get um, Cyrex and Sector, but I think as a combination of one, maybe we might bring back Triborg. And the other third character, Shock Us, Netherrealm. Let's see how, what you guys are going to give us. And I, from what I heard, I think well, Netherrealm was actually make want to expand more on their content, too. So let's see what happens. So yeah, the roster is absolutely amazing, and hands down, I, I would say you guys nailed it here too with the roster, and thank you guys for bringing in some very classic characters too, and also redeeming a few other ones too, like my bro my buddy Liu Kang. 
So let's talk about the playability. It's a bit slow, it's a bit more technical, but in my opinion, it's fine. Even though when I play the, the training mode, which took me around three hours, uh, seriously, three hours it took me. Um, it's a bit slow, but at the same time, it feels right though, because it feels a lot more different. That way they don't have to go with the same formula how they used to do it. And you got, you're gonna get used to it through in the very end. And after that, um. The fatal blows in the game, oh my god, they're so brutal though. And the, to me, in my opinion, the most brutal fatal blow, in my opinion, actually has to go with Shao Kahn and I would have to say Noob Saibot. Jesus, that, that that's brutal. And there's so many of them that are brutal. And I give it to, I give it that too. And the fatalities, the best ones, in my opinion, hands down are to two people, Cassie Cage and Johnny Cage. Those are the best ones. Hey, they're they're the best ones in, in in the game in my opinion, and I don't know about your guys' favorite fatalities, but they're really good though. I really don't want to show fatalities here because YouTube is very sensitive with that too. So <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, um, everything about that is really good though. So let's talk about the towers in the game. The towers in the game, there is the regular towers, the classic towers that you go to, like you know the arcade mode where you get pretty much get the endings though. And I really do like the endings though. They're really interesting though, even though two of them were very controversial. Um, but you know what? I don't care as long as I complete it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. But the one, in my opinion, my favorite one would have to be Johnny Cage, Luke Kings, and of course, um, I'm gonna have to say, um, Garrus a little bit though, because you finally kind of don't know, like, why he pretty much decided to pretty much join Chronic Aside and at the same time wants to do something different. But you know what? It is what it is. And yeah, and also the Living Towers. At launch, they were terrible. For example, if you guys want to advance a little bit more further to the Living Towers, you have to do 60, no, 60, not 70 brutalities with a specific character in order to go to those towers. And to me, that was absolutely ridiculous, though. And then with that, later on, NetherRealm addressed this, and they pretty much patched it in, and it, they completely, like, lowered it down, though. And then the loop based stuff, um, yeah, that one, um, they did sum it down, though, because you have to do so many ridiculous things, too, and especially with the time crystals, which was ridiculous, though. We'll get to that in a little bit, though, but here they actually fixed it, and I'm actually happy that they did. There's a bunch of challenging stuff that happens, too, and I really do like it, though. And it sometimes can kick your butt, too, because some of these, um, the AI here is really brutal. And I, I gotta say, the single-player stuff in this game is really good, though. <coughs> so, yeah. The regular towers are good, and the living towers, despite having a rough launch, they fixed it, and they patched up whatever they needed to do. So, I, 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 give, I give them credit. Let's talk about the multiplayer in the game. If you're a casual, uh, if you're a casual person like me, just go with just regular, um, like regular no multiplayer, just to play against uh, friends and stuff like that, or maybe like you know connecting with stuff with like other people that you may have know of and just play against them. Though, it's it's really cool though. Competitively, good luck though, because when you reach some um, ranked matches, geez, you're gonna get your butt kicked a lot. So yeah, and, and the net code is actually not that bad though, even though there's a few moments though where you can pretty much just focus on the pink because sometimes the pink can go a little further down. So good luck with like, you know, finding, if you see like a very laggy parts, just pretty much just walk out though. And don't offend, it, I know they're, not, they're gonna be a little offended though, but you know what, at least you don't wanna play a laggy game though. So you don't wanna give that. So the multiplayer is actually good. Not much to say, but it's, it, 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 it's there. Let's talk about the crypt. Visiting Shang Tsung's um, whole island is actually really cool though and you get to visit like so many easter eggs from the movie from the original movie though and you get to see pretty much Carrie voicing Shang Tsung which is really cool though and then he pretty much gives like lore to like what really happens and stuff like that you get to see easter eggs about well, what really happened to Kano um, and other characters and by the way some people some were complaining about like you know where's Ermac and where's Kenshi you get to learn their fates in the game. And yeah, you're gonna be a little disappointed, but you know what, at least it's there and it exists though. And yeah, and the crypt, it's, it's a lot of fun though. They made it into a third person instead of a first person, like, you know, looking around and stuff like that. I like how the way it's implemented and stuff like that. And even though we thought that character was Rain though, and it's not Rain, it's actually a just an ordinary monk character and just visits around the um, Shang Tsung's island and pretty much just finds loots and treasure and stuff like that for like, you know, to update your characters and stuff like that. So you can get some pretty cool loot though. Even though at launch, it was ridiculous how the way it is, but they did dumb it down a little bit and I'm actually happy that they fixed it though. But if you clock in like around 100 hours or so on living towers, multiplayer, stuff like that, you can pretty much unlock everything though. I pretty much clocked in on Mortal Kombat 11 like around 50 hours, so I think I'm nearly halfway through though, even though um, I haven't actually unlocked all the fatalities and brutalities for all the characters though, so 
I still got like 50 plus hours more to go, so. But you know what, I'm there only just to have fun and stuff like that. And I haven't visited the whole crypt, so I can't wait to see what I'm gonna be seeing some more Easter eggs though, even though I'm a little spoiled about the internet, how the way they showed it. So yeah, the crypt is actually not that bad though. And I like how the way it looks like in third person though, even though they did have a rough launch though, but they fixed it up and I'm actually happy that they did. All right, let's talk about the cons in the game. Um, yeah, like I said, the living towers at launch were really rough though. The ridiculousness of how the way it works and stuff like that, it's, it's just, it ruined the fun though. But l thankfully Netherrealm did fix it and they patched it up though. And I'm actually happy that they did. And after that, well, um, I'm really happy that they really fixed everything though. Even, even though seeing other YouTubers that they clocked in 100 hours on living towers, multiplayer, and playing against friends and stuff like that, they unlocked almost everything for the crypt. I'm actually happy about that though. And then also the loot too. Oh, if you really want to add augments and stuff, if you want to get like, you know, Raiden's hat, Aaron Black's magnums, um, uh, Devorah's spiky stuff, and then Katana. Oh, even though Katana. I hate to say this. I'll get to Katana in a little bit though, but... Yeah, to unlock the loot, you have to do so much grinding in order to do that too. But you know, I'm cool with grinding and stuff like that, but you have to do so much more. You have to clock in a lot in order to unlock the costumes, dude. And I really want to unlock more costumes for Luke King, Aaron Black. I want to get the Aaron Black all the way he looks like in story mode, though, because he looks like a Moana cowboy, and that's cool. Even though I am disappointed with two characters. I liked them in MKX, but now they dumbed them down here a lot more. Aaron Black, I got the hang of him immediately, though, but... I'm kind of like a little disappointed that he doesn't bring back his Tarkatan suit. But here, Katana was terrible in this game. Her combos are really hard to launch. You have to be really fast to in order to like, you know, lock them up though. And how the, and by the way, how the way her supers are implemented, I don't like them at all. They, they, they're terrible. And I hate to say this too, but Katana, I find her the weakest character in the series. Much more weaker and much more weaker than Jade. Jade is actually more stronger here, especially now that she made a comeback though. And I'm really disappointed. And sadly too, Devora, Devora. When I played her, I was, she was the last character I was playing as in the living tower and the in the regular towers to get her arcade ending. And I was really angry of how the way she was implemented. Her combos are really hard to do. She's much more weaker, right next to Katana, and Jesus, I had so many losses in that game though, and I had a lot of losses with Johnny Cage, I was a little bit of a noob of how the way it was implemented, but I got the hang of his moves and stuff like that, but Jesus, Devora and Katana are like the ones that have the crappiest combos and hard to hit combos though, it's just bad, and really Netherrealm, like, they, I hate to say this, you guys really need to fix them up a little bit because they suck. And, I, and by the way, I did my best and everybody noticed like, you know, on my stream it, it's um, that it's, they're terrible and I couldn't do more. So that's, those are my only cons though, but I still got one more left though. Um, the microtransactions, they're in the game. If you want to get time crystals to get like, you know, costumes and stuff like that, you have to put it in. For example, like 500 crystals, I think they're like around 499. Um, like I think maybe around 10,000 crystals, I think it's like $20. Microtransactions like, you know, are taking over on mobile games and now they're taking over on, on video games too. And then I know in Devil May Cry, they had that too. And I, I had to subtract the point because of the microtransactions in order to get the red ores. But here, the time crystals and to unlock costumes and stuff like that, it's ridiculous though. But seriously, now they're on why? Or should I say Warner Brothers? It was your idea. And that's about it too. And my final verdict for this game though, um, I gave, well I never played Mortal Kombat 9, MKX, I do own it. The graphics in this game look absolutely beautiful and it's one of the best looking Mortal Kombat games to date. And it's right next to Injustice 2 because Injustice 2 had the best graphics though. So yeah, um, um, the graphics here are beautiful and much more colorful and stuff like that. And seeing how the way, if, if you really want to buy this game, if you're a huge true Mortal Kombat fan like me, buy this game and try it out because it's a lot of fun. And my final verdict for this game though, um, I gave, well, I never played Mortal Kombat 9. MKX, I do own it. Um, I, I would do a future review on that one as soon as possible, but I think they're both tied because I'm gonna have to go with an eight out of 10. MK, um, in my opinion, it's it's pretty much kind of the, the final trap in the trilogy after MK9, MKX, and now MK11. So, 
I don't know what they're going to be doing next. I know they're going to be doing Injustice 3 for sure, but I know they have a separate team vo um, focusing on the um, characters and pretty much pretty adding in some other new elements. So let's see what they're up to next, though. I, and if, if Injustice 3 is going to be next, then I'm ready for it because I loved Injustice 2. Injustice 2 was actually one of my favorite fighting games as of, like, this generation. And it's really cool. And this one, this one is close by, though, but Injustice 2 beats it because the grinding, some of the characters were really weak, though. <coughs> and... So a lot of the costumes, it's a bit ridiculous though, because in and, 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 and Justice 2, you get the costumes as much as you can. And it's worth, and by the way, if you're a huge Mortal Kombat fan, it's worth buying. Buy it, because it's real it's a really good game though. And then the DLC that's coming out soon, it's gonna be amazing though. So yeah. So for next time, guys, um, I'm gonna be reviewing uh, for the next video game review, and I think I'm gonna be posting this on Wednesday or maybe Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna be doing Dragon Ball Fighters. See? See what I mean? Now that I got myself, my friend right over here, Goku, man, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, guys. I I am truly am, and I am actually excited to review this. And I know the game came out like January of 2018, and it won Best Fighting Game of the Year, beating Smash, which is really shocking, though. Um, I cannot wait to review it, though. And what sucks is that I don't actually have all the DLC characters, though, but. I can't wait to discuss it. That's going to be the next video that's going to be coming up. So I'm ending the video here because I pretty much put in a lot of time on this one. So um, I really wish I can show videos and stuff like that though. But I think I did show you a few videos of this because I want to keep this as speech as possible. Because YouTube is very sensitive. Especially with this game right over here. Because yeah, I understand. There's a bunch of blood, gore, fatalities and very brutal beatings that you do against the characters. So with that in mind guys... I'll see you guys next time with Dragon Ball Fighters. Here's Johnny! Here's Johnny! <laughs>